Welcome to KetoMealsAndRecipes.com. Today I'm making my peanut butter fudge and as a bonus I'm showing you four variations to this very delicious but simple recipe. I felt a little guilty because it took me so long to edit and post this video so I hope you enjoy it. I would also like to take a moment and thank Belize Guy for suggesting this flavor of fudge. And Belize Guy, thank you very much for sharing the wonderful story as to why peanut butter fudge is your favorite flavor. I hope that this version will be as good and flavorful as the one you remember. One more point of business before starting this recipe. I would like to ask that if you're new to my channel or have not done so before, please subscribe and turn on your notification bell and at the end comment and share this recipe with a friend or someone that you know. And if you like, you can also share it on your social media accounts. I always mention this at the end, but I think I'll mention it now. A reminder that the link for the printable peanut butter fudge recipe with all the ingredients will be available in the description below where you will also find the links for all the videos I will mention throughout this video. Now the macronutrient ratio for the peanut butter fudge is 4.7 to 1 with 4.2 grams of total carbs, 1.1 gram of dietary fiber resulting in 2.1 grams of net carbs per cube of fudge. As you may have noticed, this is the third fudge recipe that I've posted. And as with the first two recipes, each has started with my sugar-free sweetened condensed milk. I like to use sweetened condensed milk to make my fudge because it is more stable at room temperature and has the perfect melt-in-your-mouth texture. So on the day that you plan to make your fudge, the first thing you have to do is to prepare one full batch, which is 240 grams or one cup of my sugar-free sweetened condensed milk. When you've made your sugar-free sweetened condensed milk, just set it aside and let it cool for about 5 minutes as you stir continuously. For this fudge, you actually want the sweetened condensed milk to still be warm, especially as you're pouring it into the medium-sized mixing bowl. I'd like to point out that I'll be making two basic versions of my peanut butter fudge. So I'm actually dividing the sweetened condensed milk into two bowls with equal amounts in each. In this first bowl, after pouring in my sweetened condensed milk, add the unsalted butter then add the smooth organic peanut butter. Unless you're making your own peanut butter, please always read the label and make sure that the peanut butter is just ground peanuts and does not have any gums or sugars or other ingredients. And then add the salt and the vanilla. Now stir to combine all the ingredients into a nice homogeneous mixture. And while you're mixing, don't forget to scrape the sides and the bottom of the bowl. I would suggest that you continue folding and stirring for at least one to two minutes. This is to ensure that the sweetened condensed milk, peanut butter, and all the other ingredients are really well combined. With that done, the next step is to pour your fudge mixture into a parchment lined container. Then just cover the top with cling wrap and refrigerate until the fudge is firmly set. In most circumstances, it only takes about one hour for the fudge to set completely. Now to make the second version, the crunchy peanut fudge. I repeat all the steps for the smooth version, but this time instead of using the smooth peanut butter, I used a crunchy peanut butter instead. And after stirring all the ingredients very well, and with everything combined, pour the crunchy fudge mixture into the parchment lined container. Cover the container with cling wrap and off to the fridge with the second batch. And while this fudge is setting, I'm going to make a chocolate ganache. There are different ways of making a ganache, but the way I make my ganache is over a double boiler or bain-marie. To the mixing bowl, I add the heavy cream and the cocoa powder. And if you like a bitter dark chocolate flavor, that's all you have to do. Just stir and cook it. This would be enough for the dark chocolate version. But if you like a semi-sweet chocolate taste, which I do, I add some of my monk fruit based sweetener, which I ground to confectionery powder, and stir as it all comes together. I usually make my ganache with a solid chocolate, but powder is also good, just the textures will be a bit different. After you notice that everything is combined and well integrated, continue cooking over low heat for about 5 minutes. The extra cooking time will help to break down the sugar alcohols and will reduce the crystallization in the chocolate. If you're not sure if the sugar alcohols have dissolved, put a little bit of ganache on one of your fingers and rub it between two fingers. If it feels gritty, it's not done and continue cooking for a few more minutes and then test again. And when your ganache is done, remove the bowl from the heat and set it aside. You want this ganache to be completely at room temperature before you're going to use it with your fudge. 
It's been about an hour and my fudge is set. So I lift the fudge out of the container using the parchment and then just peel off the parchment from the fudge. I find that this particular peanut butter fudge is very satisfying and very rich and you only need very small pieces. So I usually cut it into smaller pieces than I do my other fudge, but that's up to you. For your information, the macros are based on larger pieces of fudge, so by cutting them smaller you're actually reducing your carbs. Now to show you what I like to do with this peanut butter fudge. I take my little plastic forks that I use to make my rum balls and using these forks I dip and coat the entire piece of fudge in my cooled chocolate ganache. After dipping hold your coated chocolate fudge pieces over the bowl for a moment to allow the excess chocolate to drip and then put each square on a wire rack and just repeat with as many pieces as you like. I like this peanut butter and chocolate fudge combo because it has a similar taste but a much creamier mouthfeel to that of my peanut butter or almond cups which I really love. And if you like Reese's peanut butter cups do check that recipe out as well. If you do not want so much chocolate place some of your ganache into a piping bag cutting a very tiny hole in the tip. Then using your piping bag drizzle the chocolate back and forth over the fudge. I have to say this was very satisfying to do. Because I want to differentiate between the smooth or the crunchy fudge, for the crunchy fudge I made a drizzle design so I could tell which one was which. And when you've dipped or drizzled the fudge pieces that you want and put everything back on your wire rack, place the entire wire rack into your refrigerator to allow the chocolate to set and to keep everything nice and cool. One of my favorite ways to enjoy this fudge is with a nice hot cup of coffee or on occasion a tall glass of cold almond milk. In the comments tell me what other beverages you like with your fudge. So here we are with the finished version. This is how from one simple recipe you now have four delicious variations. By the way the best way to store this fudge is keeping it in an airtight container in your fridge. I find that it will last two to three weeks without any change in flavor. But if I'm going to have it longer than that, I put the extra pieces of fudge in an airtight container and put it into my freezer where it will keep for several months. I have a lot of fall recipes to post, so this will be the last one of the fudge recipes for now. But if there's ever a flavor you would like me to make and show, just leave me a comment in the description. Thank you very much to everyone for watching my video tutorial. I hope you will try this recipe and that it will bring back fond memories for you as well. And if you like this video, please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. The Kofi link is in the description below. Your support of coffee and kind comments is greatly appreciated. Thank you.